Jed Carney, ACTU President. Hi, Jed. Hi, Amanda. Um, raw news is more than uh, just um, the local news. We'll be bringing you issues that are affecting Australian workers today. Um, all right, let's get right into it. Um, Jed, let's talk about climate change. You've yeah. been um, travelling around the country spreading the word. Yes, my favourite subject at the moment. <laughs> no, that's true. I've been really lucky to be travelling right across Australia from Perth, Adelaide. I've been up to Brisbane, northern New South Wales and Sydney. And I've been talking with a lot of workers in workplaces, with communities and community gatherings. Um, and really trying to cut through all of the misinformation I think that's been out there and actually talk to people directly about the carbon package and what it means for workers, what it means for households. Mm. And it's been amazing, Amanda, because generally when you can actually sit down and have that conversation with people, they really understand it, they get a, they get a grasp of it and, and generally um, all, those, um, con all the confusion is cleared. Oh, fantastic. So, so what, what are the main issues that, that you talk to the workers about? Sure. Well, the main issues that people raise is that they uh, are fearful that there's going to be a huge impact on their household budgets because cost of living, as we know, is a big issue for most people at the moment. Mm -hmm. But of course, the package delivers very fair and adequate compensation to anyone that is affected by the tax that is actually only put on 500 businesses. There's no tax on individuals, there's no tax on you and me. Mm -hmm. um, and any increase in um, the cost of energy, for example, or heating, that sort of thing, people will get compensation for that through the tax system. Uh, mostly, or through direct payments. Yeah. Uh, the other fear, of course, that was put out there by the opposition is that jobs will disappear overnight. And of course, that is not going to happen. Um, we went into this to make sure that jobs would be protected and that there would be new jobs. But most excitingly, what people have been very interested in is the $10 billion of new money, or $14 billion all up, but $10 billion of new money to create new industries wow. for innovation, for research, to make sure that Australia is at the forefront of building, developing and using clean energy technologies. And that means millions of jobs for Australians in the future. Wow, that seems like such a good investment. Yeah, it is. So what's the general consensus that you've been getting? I mean, uh, a lot of the newspaper articles suggest that people are against the carbon tax. Is that the kind of feeling that you're getting while you're out in workplaces mm -hmm. and in the community? Look, I think initially people are very confused and they've got very direct questions to ask. Some people, I'll admit, are even angry, I think, about it yeah. um, because they have fallen victim to the scaremongering. But once you actually explain the package how it works um, I'd say pretty much the majority of people have said well look thanks for letting us know about that they're willing to take away the information and have a closer look at it at mm -hmm. the very least um, and at best other people have said well that's cleared it up so it's been a very helpful exercise I think oh wow mm -hmm. so just uh, just to summarize what what were the issues that unions were campaigning um, for and what what did we uh, what did unions achieve Okay, well very quickly, the three things that we went in to achieve out of the, um, the whole negotiations were that there would be fair compensation so that households and individuals wouldn't be out of pocket mm -hmm. from That's this, important. particularly low and middle income households, that jobs in those industries that might be affected, um, the what we call the emission intensive trade exposed industries, that like coal and steel, that those jobs would be protected and we've got fabulous packages to make sure that those industries are, are looked after right. and that there would be new jobs for the future. And with all of this money that's going to be invested in new industry, I think we've covered off on all our three issues. Fantastic. So if want, people want to know a little bit more um, detail about the carbon package, where can they go? Um, they can go to um, our website, mm -hmm. to www.actu.org.au mm -hmm. uh, slash campaigns mm -hmm. slash climate change jobs, that's a long address, um, but you can go there and have a look and there'll also be explanation about how this package will actually start reducing pollution, which is what's important I think. Fantastic. And I see there you've got a few examples of uh, the activist kit so people can know how to write letters to the editor or yeah. any of that kind of activity. Um, there's activist kits and um, there's all sorts of information on the website. Uh, We've also been standing on street corners at Flinders Street Station. Oh, I don't know if they might have seen some footage of that, but we've um, been handing out leaflets. And generally speaking, I think people are now understanding it a lot more and are quite accepting of the package and, and what it's about. Oh, that's good. Um, I guess um, it's important that unions do go out there and let people know what the facts are and, and, and that the scaremongering has to stop because it seems like the package invests in our future, looks after our economy and... and basically uh, normal households won't be affected. Actually there's one ask I will 
put on people that might happen to be watching is to, once you find out the facts, to please talk about it out there and to actually allay people's fears and to actually tell people the facts, tell them what you know and be confident that this package will deliver for all Australians as well as give us a start to a clean energy future. Mm, fantastic. Thanks for that, Jed. Um, okay, so on to another issue um, that's been in the media, um, this retail workers situation. Um, it seems that Joe Hockey's come out to say that penalty, penalty rates have, should be scrapped. What Do you know a little bit more about that? Sure. Well, this whole conversation started because the retail sector um, felt that they were being hard done by the, by the fact that people can buy things online a lot more cheaply than they can mm -hmm. in shops. And uh, the Productivity Commission did a report recently. And since then, we found that um, the retail employers and the opposition have been out saying that the whole reason for the woes, of course, are you know, high wages and penalty rates, uh, which is absolutely nonsense. If you look at what people actually earn in the retail sector, it is the minimum wage, about 17 bucks an hour. Mm, that's nothing. Which is very low. Mm. And in fact, many kids, as we know, work in the retail sector for about, well, less than eight bucks an hour. Mm. So, you know, wages are not the major issue for the sector. I mean, really, and penalty rates, of course, attacking penalty rates is probably one of the worst things you can do for people on the minimum wage because people depend on the extra penalty rates to meet the mortgage and make those extra costs and it's also fair compensation for having to work at 3am in the morning or miss your kids footy match on Saturdays mm. or missing that wedding or all those important events that we all know happen very much on the weekend still. Mm. So, you know, it is, we think, just bringing work choices back by stealth. They found an excuse to bring work choices back. Mm -hmm. And instead of the industry going out and saying, well, we need to get smart, we need to innovate, we need to make sure we can compete in a global world, they once again are going to attack the workers and say, no, we should pay them less wow. and uh, bring back a work choices style of arrangement. So they're wanting to cut wages, I think, by 10% or something. I mean, really. Wow, that's huge. It's crazy. If you're mm -hmm. already on the minimum wage, that is absolutely a crazy thing to do to people and I think a false economy because if people's earning is less, they spend less in the economy, you create a constant cycle, I think, of driving the economy down. Right. How does that make sense? Because there's a report that suggests that retail profits rose by um, oh, yeah. 50% while total wages only increased by 24%. Yeah, well that's what just goes to show that it's not wages, it's not workers that are troubling the industry. You know, there are issues like high rent, the high value of the Australian dollar. Mm. You know, there's all sorts of things that are impacting on the industry that they just need to get their act together mm. and stop blaming the government and stop blaming workers for their inadequacies as, as you know, retailers and managers. Right. So do you think it's a liberal attack on um, workers' rights? Because um, I know on the weekend John Alexander um, came out and said that um, penalty rates should be scrapped and across the board, not just retail. I know, wasn't that astounding? Yeah. Um, here is a man who is in the very seat that John Howard was evicted from because of our Your Rights at Work campaign against work choices. Mm. And he is, again, reiterating the fact that we should go back to work choices style of industrial relations. I think it's absolutely astounding. And mm. it just goes to show that the Liberal Party cannot let go of reforming the IR, forming industrial relations, to an old work choices style regime, which is something we do not want for workers. Mm. So right now they're saying that um, retail wages should be cut, but if, if that's the precedent, does that mean that um, penalty rates across the board will be cut as oh, well, like in absolutely. nursing? Or? I mean, well, retail is one of the largest employers in the country. Right. Uh, I think it goes neck and neck with health and community services. They employ hundreds of thousands of people, so it would impact an enormous part of our workforce. Um, and it would be a chip a wedge in the door for such policies to go further and mm. we don't want that. Mm, we definitely don't want that. Oh, it seems like a very serious situ situation. So how can people um, become active on this um, issue? Um, well, they can go to our Your Rights at Work website. We've got some actions for people to take, particularly if you work in the retail sector. I think it would be fantastic if you got online and actually had a look at the things that you can do. You can write to your local MP, you can ring up radio station, you can write letters to the editor. There's a lot of stuff that we can do to say, hey, don't attack us. You know, we're the workers in retail, we're the ones that keep you guys afloat and you know, help deliver these massive profits 
Wow. Yep, definitely. Um, okay, so on to more international issues. Um, the issue in Fiji, Jed, you were there uh, not too long ago. What's, what's Yeah, this? this is really very distressing and it's happening in Australia's backyard. It's happening in the South Pacific. Uh, the um, Bani Marama regime there, which is a military regime, has been um, handing down these decrees that effectively, Amanda, break any um, union activity that's possible at all. So, uh, for example, they declared null and void all enterprise bargain agreements in the public sector right. and just uh, said, you know, any pay rises, etc., cetera, negotiated through their ZBAs just don't exist, any conditions, any protections that workers had don't exist. Um, they have denied people the right to meet, so you can't hold union meetings without special permission and of course they're not granting permission to unions to meet with their members. Right. Uh, there's all sorts of awful things down to, right down to um, physical harassment and imprisonment of union activists and union leaders in Fiji. Wow, that seems like a breach of human rights in general. It is total breach of human rights, it's a total breach of workers' rights and it's something that Australian unions and the international trade union movement are very worried about. So what, so what is the union movement doing about it? Well we have met as um, a union movement with our international um, partners. We are asking everybody to really be aware of what's happening. Um, we will be taking some action uh, to assist our fellow workers in Fiji starting with a, um, some protests and some rallies on the 2nd of September which is a Thursday. Um, now, if for information about the rallies, perhaps Amanda, I know you've got some information there, you could let people know where these are, but the 2nd of September is a day that um, two union leaders, the President of the Fijian Trade Union Council and another union leader will be tried, wow. actually, for ho all they did was hold a meeting of members. Ooh, I think people really need to go and support this cause. Um, so in Sydney, uh, please go to the Fiji uh, Consulate General's Office at uh, 100 Walker Street in North Sydney. And um, in Canberra, um, you'll need to go to the Fiji High Commission at 19 Bale, uh, Bale uh, Crescent in Deakin. So yeah, please so that's come along. That's at 11am on Friday, sorry, Friday the 2nd of September. There will be more information about this on the ACT's website. So. Um, keep watch on that. Yeah, great. Um, and also, just briefly, um, there was a delegation set to Fiji. Yes, there was. Um, internationally, uh, the world really is watching Fiji and is very worried about this, and the ILO sent a uh, delegation to Fiji to actually investigate uh, the breaches, really, of human rights and also ILO conventions, because Fiji is a signatory to the ILO conventions. Uh, but sadly, uh, the very day that the ILO were meeting with the Fijian government, uh, the Fijian government moved in to break up a, um, an AGM. Uh, the F FTUC were meeting to discuss the decrees. They actually had um, permission to have the meeting mm -hmm. and the permission was um, withdrawn and the meeting was broken up and they weren't allowed to hold their meeting. And so this is the, at the same time that the ILO is in the country, um, which just goes to show what this regime thinks really of international conventions and human rights. Right. Okay, so we must urge everyone to come along to the rallies and show your support um, and make sure that um, you know our neighbours um, are entitled to the same rights as us. We will be considering further action in conjunction with the international trade union movement and we'll keep you informed about that. Great. Um, okay, so just quickly, Jed, um, the Qantas situation, it's all over the media. Um, ah, yes. Um, Amazingly, um, today we have discovered that Qantas plans to uh, get rid of about a thousand jobs wow. in Australia, uh, which is devastating news for Qantas workers, very loyal Qantas workers. The majority of those will be pilots and flight attendants. And they've also announced their intention to um, move uh, a, lot, a, a large part of the business or start a large part of the business in Asia. Now this is uh, a big iconic Australian company right. that Australians are very emotionally tied to and have supported for years and years and I think this is a big shock that uh, such a company such as Qantas uh, would have such little disregard for Australian workers and indeed um, for Australians who would like to see Qantas very much stay in the hands of, of Australia. Yeah, of course. And so do you know whether um, they're forced redundancies or...? Uh, the unions will be making absolutely sure, well, we will be demanding that there's no forced redundancies mm -hmm. that are handed out, but 
nevertheless, regardless of that process, I think that this is an indictment on the management of Qantas right now. Right. So how can people um, show their support um, for Qantas workers? Um,